What is the future of AI-based test automation? How can you use playwright testing at scale? And why is unlocking shift left testing with virtual devices so important? Find out in this episode of the Test Guild News Show for the week of September 17th. So grab your favorite cup of coffee or tea and let's do this. But first, are you looking to take your automation projects to the next level? Look no further than Apply Tools and the Visual AI Validation Testing Platform. Trust me, it is a true game changer. Plus, you can try it out for yourself by creating a free account now by using the special link in the first comment down below. So speaking of Apply Tools, coming on September 28th at 11 a.m., they're having a not-to-be-missed webinar on the future of AI-based test automation hosted by Adam Carmi. Adam is the person that taught me all about AI and visual validation testing way back in 2015. So if you want to dive into the transformative power of AI in the realm of software testing, you're in good hands because Adam really knows his stuff. So in this webinar, you're going to discover how AI is revolutionizing end-to-end test coverage, minimizing the need for extensive coding, and paving the way for the next generation of automation tools. Also, with the rise of innovations like ChatGPT, this session promises insights into the evolving role of testers and a glimpse into the future of AI-driven testing solutions. So don't miss it. Register now with the link in the first comment down below and hope to see you there. So last time I looked, I think the Selenium Java binding is still the most popular binding for Selenium testing. So I thought you'd find this next article helpful. So in this recent article by Alex, he delves into the common practices of using Java doc and page classes to explain method functionalities. Alex argues that for many methods, Java doc annotations are redundant as the methods themselves are straightforward and self-explanatory. So instead of relying on Java doc, he emphasizes the importance of writing concise and clear code. As an example, he demonstrates how a complex method can be refactored into a simpler, more comprehensive method Eliminating the need for extensive documentation, Alex's key message is prioritize writing short, easy to understand code over extensive Java doc annotation. And I think this message resonates with anyone that's writing automation testing because you need to make it as readable as possible because that is one of the key indicators that you're going to have a successful automation framework in the long run. So I have to admit I'm a learning training junkie. So I was excited to see this next announcement on a new course that is going to help you with API testing. And so James announced that he has a new Karate Fundamentals course that is live on Pluralsight. And the new course is titled Karate Fundamentals, and it's now available. And this course dives deep into the open source Karate platform, which uniquely combines API automation, performance testing, and UI automation into one framework. So Participants will gain hands-on experience by building an API automation and performance testing framework from the ground up. And by the end of the course, learners will be equipped with the skills to implement both automated and performance testing of APIs, making them invaluable assets in the ever-evolving tech landscape. And while you're there, you might as well also check out my quick guide to API testing. And a lot of the principles I cover in this course apply not just to HP's Unified Functional Testing, but applies to any automation test tool. So if you're a beginner in API testing, I highly recommend you check out my course as well. Next up, we have a follow the money segment with a company recently raising a bunch of dough to help revolutionize DevOps for developers. So developer portal startup Port has successfully raised $18 million in a Series A funding round, bringing its total funding to $23 million. Port's mission is to alleviate the common challenges faced by developers who often juggle multiple tools for DevOps tasks. By integrating these processes into a single portal, Port enables developers and testers to officially manage the DevOps task, enhancing the productivity. And the company has also unveiled Port Ocean, which is an open source framework, further expanding on its platform. So as you know, I'm always looking for tools, and this is a new one. You could check it out as well, and let me know your thoughts about it. And another tool that caught my attention this week as I was researching news for testers is a tool for Android developers and QA engineers. So I found this tool. It's by the team at QA Work. They've unveiled Android Bug Hunter 2.0, which is a state-of-the-art manual app testing tool. And this upgraded version introduces a deep link checker and QA tips, which is aimed to streamlining the app update process for Android devices. Notably, the tool is completely free 
and boasts features like low memory testing, customizable grid, advanced screenshot capabilities, and a video recorder with a pause and resume function. And you can check that out by finding it in the links down below. So I'm actually hosting a webinar this week that I think you need to check out as well. And it's all on unlocking shift left testing with virtual devices. So as you know, in the evolving world of testing, teams are increasingly adopting shift left testing for more efficient outcomes. And one significant strategy in this shift is the use of virtual devices. And while real devices offer unparalleled accuracy, virtual tools like emulators and simulators significantly enhance test coverage and help you to reduce defects. So join me and Perfecto testing expert Matthew in an upcoming webinar where we'll delve into the advantages of integrating virtual devices into your testing approach from early testing to achieving accelerating results with a blend of real and virtual devices. This session promises valuable insights. So to master the balance between iOS simulators, Android emulators, and real devices for your mobile test automation objectives, I recommend you register now and definitely hope to see you there and hear your questions. So I know a lot of you out there are using JMeter for performance testing. So I found a blog post that might help you with that as well. So in a recent blog post on more about QA, Rashid delves into the intricacies of performance testing using JMeter. This article emphasizes the importance of simulating multiple users to measure an application's response times and scalability under different levels of load. The post provides a step-by-step guide on installing JMeter, configuring a test plan, in analyzing the test results. It also touches upon advanced topics like parameterization and distribution testing. And the blog concludes by emphasizing the significance of performance testing and ensuring the robustness of applications and offers practical tips for those looking to enhance their JMeter skills. And speaking about enhancing your performance testing skills, if you're using Playwright tests, why not run them at scale to help you with performance testing as well? So Hassi just post a new link on a cool way of using a playwright test at scale. So scale right emerges as a game changer for teams using playwright. And this project offers tools to enhance testing efficiencies, notably by enabling performance tests using existing playwright test suites. And with the focus on web vitals metrics like LCD, FID, and CLS, scale right ensures comprehensive test coverage. Additionally, the project is set to introduce features for monitoring and observability, connecting playwright tests to platforms like Datadog and CloudWatch. And another anticipated feature is the ability to parallelize playwright tests on AWS Lambda, promising faster test execution. And for those that are really into optimizing their playwright tests, this tool scale right seems poised to be an essential tool you definitely should check out as well. So let's keep going with this performance testing theme with another article on rapid performance analysis using developers' tools. And this is by Stephen Townsend, where he highlights the power of developer tools for quick performance analysis. And while load testing remains a cornerstone, it's not the sole method to gauge performance. So Stephen introduces the concept of single-user performance analysis using built-in developer tools, and this approach offers insights into network traffic, response time, and data transfer sizes. And this article concludes with a call to action to delve into developer tools and discover the wealth of information it offers without the complexity of traditional load testing. And is generative AI a double-edged sword? Well, let's find out in the latest study by a big company that sheds some light on this. So as you can tell, just by this new show alone, generative AI's influence on software development and testing is growing, but not without concerns. So in this research, which surveyed 800 DevOps and SecOps leaders, it found that a staggering 90% are currently using generative AI. However, 74% feel pressured to use it despite recognizing potential security risk. So Brian Fox, a co-founder and CTO at Sonatype, commented on the findings, emphasizing the need for a balanced approach to AI adoption, ensuring both innovation and security. All right, for links of everything of value we covered in this news episode, head on over to the link in that comment down below. And while you're there, make sure to check out our awesome sponsor, Aptly Tools, free account offer, and discover how to take your automation testing to the next level, leveraging their visual AI platform. So that's it for this episode of the Test Skill News Show. I'm Joe. My mission is to help you succeed in creating end-to-end full-stack pipeline automation awesomeness. As always, test everything and keep the good. Cheers.